Hi, everybody, and welcome to Makers at Home Live. Um, I'm Janae Hawkins, the head of partnership development and DEI programming. And I am here with the beautiful, hey girl, hey, podcast host, international speaker, New York Times <laughs> best selling author, Lovey Ajay Jones. Hey. I'm here in the building. What's up? What's going on? What's going on? I haven't seen you. How you doing? Well, it's been a while. Girl, it's been more than this over here already. All right. <laughs> so yeah. much. The last time we saw each other was what? 2019 at Ad Color. Yes. That sounds about right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you and you doing all right. Listen, we got to we we are making it. We are making it in the we 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 will move past the pandemic wall. And we're making it. Girl, we, we have to make it because guess what? That's all we can do, right? Facts. That's all we can Facts do. only. So before, before, Facts we get, only. before we get into this discussion, I got I to gotta set the table so that the people can feast properly, okay? Okay. Uh, okay, get them together. We're, we're, yes, we got to get it together because today we're talking about your, your new release, okay? Professional Troublemaker, right? The Fear Fighter Manual, which is already blessing my life. But I got to let the people know how badass you are and when you started being a troublemaker um years ago when i met you wait people are saying they can't see me can y'all see me put thumbs up what's going on i can see you I can okay see well you. as long as you can see me let's keep going um four years ago at the makers conference i met you uh and it was probably a pivotal point in my life and my career i don't even think i told you this we were in the audience and the people just need to know, right? The Makers Conference, the, the audience at the time was mostly white, right? Yeah. You had just gotten yeah. off stage. You had just gotten off stage. Mm -hmm. And you gathered all the black people from the audience to take a picture. <laughs> I, did. Were, <laughs> I did. Y'all were running. So this is my first conference at the time. And I'm scared. I'm like, why are the black people running? What is happening? Right, and you were like, "No, make her so black. We got to take a picture. We got to take a picture. Make her so black. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, leave it up to me and to be collecting all the black folk. Correct, troublemaking. Okay. And so when you did, you grabbed my arm. I'm like, "Where in the hell are we going? I'm at work. I don't know what is about to happen." But we took a photo, <laughs> and when we were taking, you know, one, two, three pose, it was say, "Make her so black." A white man in the audience came up to you afterwards and said, can I get in the photo? And your response to that man and how you gathered him has stuck with me for I don't remember later. this. I don't remember this at all. This is hilarious. I do not remember this at all. Okay, tell me, tell me. What did I say? What does no, my right self say? You, you, you told him no, and this was all about the melanin. You see all these black women and men in this picture? It's for us. It's not for you. And I said, I said that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, and I didn't know what time it was, but he did. Okay. You did. Unapologetically, yes. People people are responding. Absolutely. <laughs> not so. right. That's hilarious. Absolutely. I've completely right. forgotten. I completely forgot that exchange, by the way. Completely. Like you saying it, I'm like, what? I did. Yeah. Because that's how you live your life. And you're supposed to, you're <laughs> supposed to forget it. But I didn't. Okay. And since then, I was like, I found my tribe. We are going to be friends. She told this white man, no. Okay, Listen, so yeah, I don't have and time. The true spirit of just being who you are, a troublemaker. We got we got to talk about that. And this book has already been blessing my life. But when you got into um, the audacity of unshackled white men and it being massive in your book, let's talk about it. Because you were talking about the story behind Summit and Powder Mountain. Yes, show the people. Show them. Let me show y'all this beautiful book because I'm so excited that it looks this good. Like, you know, the words ain't just hitting. It's looking good. All right. Just get into it. All right. Just so you know. All right. That's it. That's Correct. it. Correct. Okay, continue. Correct. Correct. I'm focused. I'm gotta focused. Be red. It's got to be right. Right. Listen, we can squirrel up a little bit. It's okay. It's all right. Um, yeah. So the story behind Summit and Powder Mountain. So we've got to talk about dreaming audaciously because I truly believe uh, if HBCUs had a course about dreaming on purpose, we all be better mm. people because I am a product of HBCUs. So I'm just thinking about Amen. It. I Amen. the nerve when I was at Tennessee State to do that because where we come from, right, Nigeria, 
Chicago and East St. Louis. Word. I don't know people that Word. buy mountains. So let's Word. I don't know people that buy mountains. So let's talk about that. Right. And why so yeah. Yeah. So I wrote Professional Troublemaker because I wanted this book to loan people courage in the moments they need. And sometimes the courage looks like dreaming big. Right? People tell us to dream big all the time. And you might not know what it means. I'm like, you know what? Dreaming big means you have this giant wish that you're not sure how it's going to come true because it's just so big, right? And I think don't stop there. The thing is don't stop at the dreaming big, but I want you to start there. And I wanted to write the story of Summit because I've been invited to Summit. I've gone to Summit. Summit is an organization that was started by these white dudes who decided that they were going to buy a mountain because they like to go to these cabins, hang with their people. They went enough and they literally were like, I wonder if we can buy a mountain. <laughs> Let me say that again. Right. Summit is owned by white boys who took their friends to weekends in a cabin that were in the mountains and they didn't just say, let me buy the cabin. Mm -hmm. They yeah. were like, I want to buy the mountain. Oh my God. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> how do you even think a mountain is for sale? I would just be thinking, let me just buy a, a cup of coffee or let me buy, I like this cabin. I'll buy the bed. Right. I'll buy the right. mattress because I laid on it right. and I liked it. Correct. These people was like, no, 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 no. No, I, I, I actually want the mountain that this cabin sits the on. The whole mountain. And I'm just like, the only way I want to be like white men, the only way, only, zero, the only way mm -hmm. is that I want to have the limitless, the limitless dreams that they have because they've never been told they can't have it. They've never been told no. The gift of the fact that they've never been told no and that this world has been built for them and they have created systems Speak. that tell everybody else you belong here, the gift that they have is that they don't think in limits because they've never been told limits exist. I want to That's unlearn. Right. I want to unlearn my pragmatism sometimes. I want to unlearn my on the ground feet here. I want to mm -hmm. unlearn the boxes that I've been put in. Like I want to unlearn the, the programming that I've gotten that told, that tells me that all I can buy is the mattress and not the mountain. Right. Oh. So that's what I'm like. I, I, when, when we talk about dreaming audaciously, the idea that you could even think you could buy a mountain. I think about the world that we live in. This book is called professional troublemaker because the world that we live in was built by troublemakers. People who looked around and said, Hmm, I know we could travel by train, but, we can probably fly up there because it'll get us there faster. Somebody called right. them crazy. Somebody called right. them crazy. But I'm like, I, I want to be limitless in the ideas of, that I have for myself, for my friends, for the world. And, and that's going to look like making trouble. That's going to look like, how can I buy a mountain? That's what that's I need to right. be thinking, not buying the mattress. The mattress ain't good enough. The mountain no. is what I need to no. think about buying and, and conquering and, yeah. and creating spaces for. So... That's why I put that in there. Like, we got to dream in ways that's like, people will laugh at us, right? At, at the audacity. I want people to laugh at my dreams, right? Because they're like, that's kind of wild. I want you to laugh at it because when it comes true, I get to come back to you and say, so you were laughing? Huh? Who laughing now, fam? Because I am also petty. Um, <laughs> right. So, yeah. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love that it's so many comments yeah. and, and resonating with what you're saying because we aren't taught to dream that way particularly people of color no. we're gonna get the black women in and how people try to limit us but girl okay, okay. right right um so i want to i want to talk about the process i love any process song making filmmaking anything documentary by the way if this is speaking to your spirit y'all go ahead y'all better place this order and stop playing these games now. okay now now if that spoke to your spirit this whole book is going to minister to you anyway continue okay it really is and y'all it's such a fast read i'm going to squirrel just a little bit this is going to be yeah. a part of people's new year's resolution 
It really is. I'm speaking that now where people, millions of people are going to get this book. This is going to be a, a New York Times best-selling copy. But you know why? Amen. Because you, I'm going into the next point. You were obedient. I'm thinking about, because this mm. has been coming up in my life several okay. times. I'm like, yes. It's so funny how things that you hear in college or years ago come back. Yes, yes. My professor, Dr. William Latham, I got I to gotta mm. say, it, when he says obedience is better than sacrifice, okay? Mm. Last, week, last week, you had an Instagram live where you talked to your book editor, and I was like this in it, because I love the process of 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 making something right that yeah. you were told to do something that's in your heart and you surrounded yourself with purpose-driven people everybody knows mm -hmm. that everybody know who your crew is and your tribe is but i want to know when was the moment where you had to be obedient and write a book about fear fighting when was that shoo you know i got the the very concrete idea for this book on the way to Paris for a speaking engagement, I usually carry a, uh, a notepad with me. And I was boarding the flight. And I, a line just dropped in my head. And it was like, I come from a long line of professional troublemakers. One of them was my grandmother. And I was like, oh, snap. My grandma's going to be in the middle of my book that I'm going to write about troublemaking. Yes. And I like got on, I sat down, I strapped the seatbelt on. And I wrote for three mm. hours, my first three hours of that flight. When I'm typically sleep on flights, so I'd be like, just knock me out. But on that flight, Thanks. I took my notebook out and it was a notebook that was this color. I actually need to get the notebook when I get home. But, and I wrote for three hours and I was like, that's my book. I felt convicted to write this book because I realized in a real way that in the times when I let fear stop me from doing what felt necessary, I lose. In the times mm -hmm. when I say I am afraid, but I'm going to do it anyway, I win. And my TED Talk was a prime example because I turned it down yeah. twice and was about to turn it down a third time when a friend didn't let me. And I thought about, and then, and then I got on that stage and gave this talk and that now has 5 million views, this talk that has now transformed my life and my career and that has gotten me thousands of emails over the last three years and I'm like I almost didn't do it because I was afraid that's I almost, I almost bless me I almost did bless not do this thing because I was afraid and I think about and it convicted me it made me say you know how many times in my life have I said no to yes opportunities that could have transformed my path how many times have I let fear make the decision for me when I could have chosen courage and how many times have I let fear stop me from doing what I'm purposed to do? And right. in the moments when I'm letting fear win, nobody wins. When fear mm. wins, nobody wins. So right. I was like, this is what my book has to be about. I got to talk about what it's like to make trouble in our lives. And making trouble in our lives is going to look like doing what feels hard. The thing that feels too big. Doing the thing that you might not feel ready for because you are compelled to do it. And we, sometimes we have to be obedient to the fact that we feel compelled to do this thing. So mm -hmm. I was obedient and I wrote this book. I wrote this book in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> I did. Yeah. The world shut down in March. My manuscript was due in May. And I sat on my couch and I was like, oh, God. But I felt convicted to write it because <laughs> it was the book that I wanted to read right then. The book that I needed to read right then. It was a wow. book that I needed to read when I said no to the TED Talk. It was the book that I needed in the moments when I'm like, I am bold, but some things are so sounding too big. Should I do it? So I was like, I need to put this pen to paper. I felt like it was my job to put it on, on paper because the words were like sitting on my shoulders. It was sitting oh, just right here. Like, we ain't going to leave you until you do this. So you going to do it or what? So I did it. And that's that obedience that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you, that is really powerful. I just have to say, when I read the TED Talk story, I've heard it before, but it, girl, I cried. I did. This is mm. one of those books where I've been writing. I have pieces of paper, post-it notes, notebooks, mm. where this book has been with me in the kitchen, the bathroom, everywhere. Mm. Because it's that. It is that powerful. And you can feel that you are operating in your calling and doing so. So I'm glad that you, mm. one, wrote the book, and second, were obedient to doing this process, right? 
Um, and I yeah. want to, I want to pivot. I want to pivot because the process requires purpose-driven people to be a part of your team. And you know, there was something that you posted, and it stopped me in my tracks. And I was, I mean, I couldn't breathe looking at it because it is. We talked about this earlier, and we, you said I could ask. Mm -hmm. Your therapist passed away, and yep, girl, that shook me. So the first thing I did after reading and digesting it and saying a prayer for you, right, was reach out to my therapist and asking, is she okay? One, how is she mm. doing? Second, I love you and thank you for being a part of this process with me. Mm. Hold up, okay? I am one uh, glass away, whatever away from being crazy, okay? So Girl, I, ain't we all? And we got to be honest about that. We got to be honest about yes. that. So I reached out to her and I'm like, listen, um, this is what happened. I saw it and this is why I'm reaching out to you. And she said she had heard it from several of her, her clients. Wow. And I'm like, the power of storytelling, the power of living in your wow. truth, and grief. Okay, so how, I just, I have to ask, and I know people that are watching that know you, how are you doing with that? Girl, and that? struggling. Uh, for the people asking, the book is called Professional Troublemaker. It's on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, independent yes. book, bookstores. Y'all go ahead and get it. Girl, now. struggling. Yeah. Let me tell you. So my therapist died on January 12th. Mm -hmm. That day I had mm, probably five or six meetings and a few like speaking engagement type things. Mm -hmm. And I found out that she died at noon. One of my friends told me around, actually my husband told me at noon, and I stared at him and I was, I remember being like, what? And he was like, yeah, she passed away. I was like, so, you know, when you know that something is too big for you to function with in the moment? Yes, I do. Like, I was like, this is, this is actually too big for me to deal with. So I'm going to get back to you. And I literally walked away because I was like, I still have eight hours worth, worth of work to do. So yeah. I did this thing that I'm not even sure how, because I don't compartmentalize that well, typically. Typically, mm -hmm. like, you see all my shit on my face. You will see all yeah. of it. Yeah. And on that day, I was like, this is too big for me to even touch right now. So I'm just going to put it in a box in my, in my chest and just leave it there and not touch it till eight. Because I had, like, a, um, I had all these, like, meetings that were, like, I couldn't cancel. And if I did, it was just unproductive. I had to record my podcast. It was the day that I recorded my podcast with Gabri, um, with Gabby Sidibe. Gabby Sidibe, yeah. Um, and I found out, and I had a meeting, and I had to talk to Gabby. And I was, like, I put it in, just threw it away somewhere. And mm. I did uh, a speaking engagement with uh, Melinda Gates. Mm -hmm. So that was the last thing on my calendar for the day. And let me tell you, I literally put this thing in a, in a, in a shelf that I didn't even know I had. Because I was like, girl, that, that, that's crazy. And in between, I had a 30-minute break in between one of my meetings. And all I wanted to do was write. So I opened up Microsoft Word and just quickly jotted down, like, thoughts real quick. And I was like, who do you go to process the death of the person who helps you process life? Right. And... I was like, all right. I finished the talk at like eight, eight o'clock. By eight o five, I was on my couch sobbing because I was. It was like, okay, now that let's take it off the shelf and actually function with it. It was so shocking. Yeah. And I was just like, I just have to write about it. So the next day, I actually had written about it from day one because when I first heard, it, I was like, I felt like I was going to tweet about it for a hot second. And I was like, nope, you can't even follow up what will come so just let it be right. and That's the day it. after i posted because i wrote this piece because that's how i process stuff and mm -hmm. i posted it and instantly everybody was like what because wednesdays are the days where i don't do meetings typically so i was like i can deal with it on wednesday <laughs> like i have time to deal with it on wednesday and writing about it people's responses to it Everybody was like, first of all, I never even thought about my 
therapist dying. Like the idea that your therapist, who is the person who really, you just kind of take for granted that they're there, even though you pay them to be there. You know, That's right. who is the person who goes, who helps you process the death of the person who helps you process life? That's right. And the grief is different. The grief is different because this is not a friend. This is not a colleague. You knew each other very much on a one-sided transactional thing, mm -hmm. but it's a meaningful relationship. And somebody on Twitter put it like this. They were like, when your therapist dies, one of the things that makes it really tough is that all the things about you that were a secret, that was no longer a secret because they knew, are now officially secrets again. I was like, that's it. That's it. I had my therapist for four years. This woman knew so much about me. She knew me more than I knew me because she knew she would like pick out certain things and she made everything seem so simple. She like, we'll unpack that. And she was this calm in spirit. Yeah. And it was this relationship that we had for four years where I didn't know much. I didn't know anything about her. When I posted my blog post, her brother commented. Her brother that was my baby sister. And I was like, oh my God. Like, I started thinking through like, how would, what would she say to me right now if I was sitting across from her being like, you died. Like, how am I supposed to deal with that? My triggers are going off. And I had to right. kind of right. use all the tools. I, used all, I had to use all the tools that she had taught me over the last four years to deal with her own debt. And I'm like, I'm so thankful to the work that she did with me that allowed me to even function. And the one thing that, the first thing I thought about when I found out she died, which is so selfish, is I never got a chance to show her that she's in my book. Right. I didn't, I was going to surprise her when I got the final copies of my book to say, hey, you're in here. And she's on page, when you get the book, Y'all will see she is on page and while 283. Looking, and while she's looking, y'all get the book now if you haven't, because you should have had that in your car and bought. Mash Send right now. Because this book is as good as it is because of the work me and my therapist have done over the years. I quote her throughout this book because I'm like, yo, she being there just dragging me for filth in the most loving right. way. So it's to lose right. her two yeah. months before the book came out at a time where I'm like, I'm going to need your help to deal with all this shit. Shock to my system. And I don't even think I fully feel, I didn't grieve it yet, really, because it would just be some days I'd be like, holy shit, she, Dr. Patterson's gone. And other days I'm just like, mm, I'm floating. And then other days I hit a wall because I haven't seen her. Right. The, my last appointment with her was December 29th. The day I found out she died, I also see her the day after. My appointment was the day after. And... I'm like, this is the longest I've gone in four years without therapy. This is the longest I've gone in four years without her being like, so tell me, how was your week? And it's wild. It is wild. It is just like stunning to have to deal with the death of a therapist. But I'm glad I talked about it publicly because I talk about her publicly in general. Right. Like, you know, whenever right. I come out of a therapy session, if there's a gem that she gave me, I would be right. like, let me, let me drop this on the people because it helped me so much. I hope it helps other people. And one of the ones that she dropped on me when quarantine happened because I had to write the book. I was being hyper productive. I was just like, I was like pouring any anxieties I had into my work. And she was like, so what do you think is causing that? And I said, you know, in times of crisis, people either sink or swim and I don't want to sink. And she looked at me and was just like, do you have to sink or swim? What if you just float? Shit. Zero. Correct. What if you just float? I said float. Yeah. Float. I didn't even know that was an option. And I posted that online and everybody was like, God damn, your therapist just dragged me too. I said, the right? Including she was amazing. Me. So yeah. girl, yeah. dragged all of us. All right. Yeah. So to lose her, I was like, man, I hope the legacy of her work is definitely in the woman that I am. It's in this yeah. book. She is all she is in this book. And for that, I'm grateful. Like, she's done incredible game-changing work because through the work that she did with me, I'm able to share all this stuff. I'm able to write this book. I'm able to be more vulnerable than I've ever been. And to have people who knew her in real life 
as Yvonne Patterson, not Dr. Patterson, message me and be like, this tribute means so much. That for me means so much. So I'm going to get my book sent to her mom. I'm going to get my book sent to her best friend. And I hope they know that, you know, her life was not in vain and she died suddenly. But listen, she leaves a legacy of beloved clients everywhere. People who clearly love her, who knew her in real life. And yeah, I'm grateful for that. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I wanted to ask and, you know, everybody has to be um, show grace and in the spirit of pivoting. Because this is this is I didn't expect for it to go there, but I see people in the chat like it's resonating with them. This is gonna save somebody's life. I mean Come on, therapy go to therapy. Women, therapy for black women is, is so revolutionary. I am about to Yes. I would not be okay if I didn't have mine. Okay. Girl, listen about the couch somewhere. Or dead. Listen, oh, oh two months of not having her her get me together, I'm over here in shambles. I feel like a frayed wire. You know, like right now, I'm, I'm like hyper productive. Like she's probably going to be like, so what are you afraid of? But I have to like right. channel her again. Yeah. I haven't started looking for a new therapist because I was like, I ain't even got time. Here's the problem with therapy, <laughs> with looking for a new therapist. <laughs> and it's so, it's so selfish. It's so selfish. I'm like, damn, now I got to tell you all my traumas and triggers and like catch you up and be like, let me tell you why I'm a mess. Let me tell you why I'm trash. Okay, <laughs> here's the things that trigger me. All right. I have a fear of vulnerability. I have a fear... Like, now I got to start over in that shit. I'm like, damn, Dr. Patterson, did you take notes? Where are my notes at? Because I, right. I got to start the, over. Right, that feels like a lot. What's the Girl, I don't know. I, I don't know. Mine. I was like, if something happened to you, God forbid. Do your husband know my name? Do, do people know me so we can refer to another person in the practice? Because I need it. But let me tell you, the good thing about this is, because I talked about this and because people were like, oh my God, like even therapists were like, I never thought about what my clients would do if I suddenly go. Like therapists are now being like, let me, let me come up with a transition plan if something happens to me, if I get incapacitated. And one right. thing that I've loved about this experience of sharing about how my therapist died is I ask people to do what you did. The next time you see your therapist, thank them for the work that they're doing, for how important yeah. that they are. For and, and they might even need to hear that because therapists are regular people. They're, they're regular sure. people just like us who have this job. But we, man, my therapist, I, I would even try to ask her questions and she would turn it right back on me. Because yeah. it wasn't about, she'd be like, nope. Anyway, and she'll do it so lovingly and gently. So yeah, yeah. you know, there's yeah. people, if you are a therapist, please, I hope you yeah. have a therapist, but Come up with a transition plan, all right? Because this is stuff that we never think about. This is, you right. never think about your therapist dying. That shit is some, it's a different type of trauma because literally the person who you would go to to be like, help me figure this out is the person that's no longer here. So yeah. it is, it is shocking. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I wanted to sit now. We had to take a moment and let the spirit move us because I got other questions. I want to talk about imposter syndrome and how you dug deep into that and more. But I had to 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 pay homage to um, you know, that that process for you, right? Because we keep moving yeah, and man. moving and the past year has been crazy. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you. My for pleasure. I'm I am glad I can. Yes. So a couple more minutes. A couple more minutes. Um All this good. book we talked about uh, it being a best. It's going to be a bestseller. It will. Amen. Amen. What, what I need to know is what you're gonna do first. Do you dance with your husband? Do you call your mama? Like, who? who do, what do you do? As soon as I don't even know. The list comes out. The first time when 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 book one hit the New York Times bestseller list, I called my mom and my sister. Yeah. They're the first ones I called. And then I called my speaker's agent because I was like, the levels just went up, the fees just went up. Let them know I'm not cheap. That's um. Okay, put and he literally was like, on my check. put yeah. some respect on my check and on my name and on this freaking zero, add an extra zero. That's I it. went from four figures to five figures instantly that day. Oh, amen. Amen, and they ain't looked back since. Let's go ahead and keep adding these coins to it, okay? <laughs> so this time, when, I, when, because it's done, okay? When I hit the times list, uh, yeah, I'm probably gonna, my husband will be the one who hears it first. Um, and then I will probably, I don't know. I'll probably just, I don't even know what I'm gonna do. Like, I have no clue. Cause I've only, I've been looking at March 2nd is the goal, right? 
Yeah. Like I've been like, I've been in the work. Shout out to my team. They yes. are working Your so hard. My team. Incredible team. They are amazing. Yeah. Team All Love, Team PRH, Team Sky Blue Media. They are amazing. And uh, I've just been goal line. Like, like, I want people to know this is the book that you need. Like the book that you will buy for somebody else, the book that will transform your life because I am on a mission to have a million people fight their fears because of this book. I'm on a mission to create a million professional troublemakers. Like I want a million people to tell me how this book has changed your life. And I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. So okay. I don't know what I'm yeah. doing. I, I'm probably just going to be like, I might weep for a bit. And then because, yes, I'm afraid why nowadays. I'm over here like, y'all, lunch, lunch is already... I grind too hard. And then you add launches to it. Child, let me tell you, there is going to be a day when y'all don't hear from me for like two weeks. Like, <laughs> that might true. be my gift to myself. Y'all not going to hear from me for two weeks. You're going to be like, where is y'all? Because this run, I'm running because I, I see the finish line. And then once right. I get to the finish line, I'm going to be like, I'm taking a break. But yeah, I'm, I'm just, Somebody said I'm just out here. Make it happen. Somebody just said love nation. Yes. Let me just say something. Yes. Love Nation is incredible. I got to speak to the people. Yes, that have I love Love ordered. Nation. We've been out here for what, 20 minutes? For the people who have been asking, because it is still Black yes. History Month, what can I do to support a Black woman? What can I do to support Black people? Where do I... Don't ask this okay. question no more. Don't ask. <laughs> it's, it's not that complicated. Buy it now. Buy it for other people. And that's yes. how you invest. That is how that is yes. how you help. You heard her dream, right? You yes. heard what she wants to do. Invest in it. It's simple. Yes. It is that simple. Place an order for this book. That's Buy simple. it for somebody. And Love Nation is amazing. Like I have such an amazing community of people who follow me online. I call them the love cousins. You know what I mean? They call each other the love cousins yep. in my app. We and yep. you know, the love cousins be showing up for a G. Like the love cousins be showing up. And I'm so grateful for it. And it's one of the yeah. things that I'm proudest of is that I've built this community of people who just will show that community is a verb. And people are ordering multiple copies of the book. And I'm so, in, I'm like, y'all don't understand you. I be, in my, I be deep in my feelings. I be deep in my feelings because y'all really be like, I'm going to support you. I'm going to buy the audio book. I'm going to buy the hardcover. I'm coming to this tour right now in case okay. anybody's Let's listening. Talk about that. Okay. Let's talk about that tour. That tour, right. Um, y'all don't just buy the book. Show up for the tour. Do that too. My, me and my people Yo. are going to be there on the 17th in Atlanta virtually. Okay. With my leak too. I cannot wait. If anybody is listening to this and you're like, I want to support, I don't have the budget. I was furloughed. I'm a student. I'm a mom. I'm a essential worker. I am giving away 500 tickets to my tour. If you buy a ticket to the tour, it comes with a signed book. The reason why this is important to me is I don't want people to not be able to get this information and get this affirmation and get this permission if they, if they don't have right. money. That's right. So my friends, my friends also show up for me. They bought over 500 tickets and actually we're probably at a thousand now yes. that we're going to be giving away to people who need to get this message. So for you to get that, if you are here, if you know somebody who needs a break, who needs some type of love and needs and is deserving of good things, go to troublemakertour.com and sign them up because they might get a free ticket to my tour. I think it's so important for people to receive this message. The lineup is strong. Yes. Strong. So for you to buy, to buy tickets, yes. to buy tickets to the actual tour, if you want to buy tickets, go to professionaltroublemakerbook.com. And then if you want and need a free ticket because it's just ain't in your budget, which I understand, go to troublemakertour.com. Dot com. I have all the information on my profile, by the way, so y'all can see it. But it's so important. We wanted to make sure we're giving back to people who give back all the time and who are the underrated rock stars of the world. So y'all come on on this tour on us. And then if you have the actual money, if you got the actual money, go ahead. Buy a ticket for a young girl in your life. Buy a ticket for a friend. Buy a ticket for somebody random online because that also was happening because of kindness trained. I'm... Yeah. Listen, I, I I am always trapped in the glass case of my uh of, of feelings of emotions, and right now is a moment when I am definitely doing it. Like I am definitely all up in my feelings, and feeling all the gratitude from y'all. Yes, 
And that's because you are operating in your purpose. That's why. That's why people Amen. are showing up for you today. Uh, some fun. Okay, rapid fire makers minute. Okay. And then I'll, I'll All right, let's do it. This girl. Okay. And show us Grace, y'all. Don't nobody time us and say she went past 60 seconds. Right. Guess what? <laughs> Black History Month. So, it's Black. Do it. We do what we want in Black History Month. And then also in March, which is Women's History Month. And then in April, which is April. Like, we're going to do all these things. And then we show we want out to. because the sun is out and it's hotter in May. So, you know, just show us a little grace. All right. The tour is Let's virtual, go. by the way. It's virtual. There's yeah. no in-person tours because it's a panorama happening. Okay? So, we are. it's all virtual. You can be showing up in a your pajamas. Is a, a panorama is happening right now. And you can be in your pajamas and attend this tour. So, anywhere you are. Mm-hmm. I cannot wait. March 17th, I will be there with bells on in my living room. All right. Yes, really indeed. Quick. Favorite Nigerian food next to jollof rice? Pounded yam and a goosey stew. Mm, yes. You hear that, Eden? I want some of that. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Well, um, early riser or night owl? Night owl. Dang, girl. Drive yourself around or be driven like Miss, uh, Miss Daisy? Be driven. Absolutely. <laughs> Best word to describe you, other than troublemaker. Mm. Damn. See, that's why we need grace. You see? Okay, let me think. Let me think. Best word to describe me, outside of troublemaker. Honorable. Oh, I like that. I like that. Um, something you're afraid of. Mm. Driving, oddly enough. I don't drive. I ain't got no license. I ain't got no license. We got to talk about that. That's funny. Something, <laughs> you, something you wish you did more of. Rest. Mm. Biggest vice during the pandemic. Biggest vice. Yeah. Girl. Ooh. Damn, that's good. Let me see. Biggest vice. What, what have I been doing with my time? Besides working, because I've been working my ass off. Um, maybe like I haven't been eating too crazy. I actually haven't. Um, I haven't. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll I'll uh watch I'll binge watch something for like a weekend. Yeah. Okay. That's a vice. Yeah, it's okay. not a big vice. I ain't got that many vices. See, I'm so boring. I ain't got that many vices. I'm very much on the straight and narrow. You can have some of mine because my one of mine is eating cinnamon rolls, child, and I need to stop. Ooh, it. Um, Ooh yeah, I, yes, I I'll take that. Right. I'll take it. Right. Favorite hype song from your professional troublemaker playlist? Knock if you buck, girl. <laughs> to get into it before this, I had to listen to so, I, so we knocking up. and bucking and ready to fight. Listen, and you then, literally be ready to fight somebody, and ain't nobody did nothing to you. Ain't nobody did nothing to you. As, you be like, as soon let's as you go. hear that song, you just transform to a different person. So you really do. Like, you know how many fights Nucky Few Buck started while we was in college at the club? Uh, like, hello? okay, Nucky Few Buck started fights. All right, and it's as uh, it's soon amazing. As coming in the club, shaking my dreads. It's a wrap. I'm done by then. It's by a wrap. Time. It's a wrap. I'm and done. you got knock into somebody, and then again, Nucky Few Buck is just an amazing song. It is just, <laughs> it's it's so violent and amazing. Like. And honestly, I have a welcome mat. My welcome mat says Nucky If You Buck. Girl. I got to I do have a Nucky If You Buck welcome mat. Yeah. Mm, okay, I got to get one of those. Um, writing, <laughs> or <podcast. laughs> writing or podcasting? Writing. Okay. Hardcover or audiobooks? Hardcover. I, am, I, I need to feel the, the pages. When I, so I'm a visual learner. When I listen to audiobooks, I don't retain them well. So I'll be trying. I'll be trying. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to listen to this audiobook. And then I look up, I probably fell asleep. So I, I'm a. <laughs> I need the Girl, book. Same, <laughs> same, 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 same. I cannot do it. Um, Jordans or wingtips? Oh, you trying to play me? <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, I you it. tried. I I tried. To play tried. me. You did try it. it. Oh, wingtips, V. I'm going to go to wingtips. I'm going to go. Okay. Damn. That's you know bogus. What? Okay. That is bogus. I know. I know. 
I was, okay. I was going to ask you lipstick or lip gloss, but we all know you the the queen of the red lip. Lip. Um, I listen. The older I get, the drier I want my lipstick. I don't want no shiny lips. I need <laughs> my lipstick to be dry. I need. Hold on. Let me go ahead, cause in case y'all got me messed up. Wait. I need my lip lip gloss. Oh. Uh. 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 Give me the mat. I need a mat. Girl, this is the lip gloss. Is and we've been we've been talking. And we gotta refresh. That's how that goes. We got to refresh. I need Matt. Come on, man. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Blazer <laughs> or fedora? Why? 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 Why must you choose violence? Why must you choose violence? Because you put Janae. nook if you buck. Why? You put nook if you buck on your list. So that's why I'm choosing violence. Why? Why, why must you choose violence? So you know I got a blazer. I mean, you got I got a fedora right here, like. <laughs> Like I just be I just be in my house with, with hats around me. Okay, look, I can't even put it on. Like <laughs> oh, man. why won't you choose amazing. violence? I'm I will sorry. pick I will pick I think I think a good fedora. A fedora just sets it off. Give me a fedora and a t shirt and I look like I'm dressed up and I got like I got sense. I love you though. That's why I'm asking these questions. <laughs> Phone or video chat? Phone or video chat? Oh, Oh, I'm notorious for FaceTiming people and, and not Same. Talking. My friends know. Bose, I be randomly FaceTiming Bose and he be in meetings and shit. And Bose will actually pick up the phone and be like, hey, girl, I'm in meetings. Why you pick up if you're in meetings? Because she ain't. Yes, yeah. I do that too. Brianna and Mia, anytime. I always, we're going to FaceTime. I'll figure yeah. what y'all do. And they got Look, y'all going to okay. deal. <laughs> uh, greatest dream you'd like to see realized for black women? Mm. I want black women to be free, free to dream, to be, to live, to laugh, to rest. I want us to be free. That's what I want for black women. Same, girl. Same. Listen, we are beyond time. That's what happens when you put two people in a room and kiki together and love on each other. That's right. I mean. Me and Janae just be kiki when we see each other in real life. Okay, in real life. This is what we do in real life. In real life. And people will interrupt and say, oh, can I talk to you for a second? Like an ad color and we'll just keep going. We will talk for hours. <laughs> we, just keep, we will just keep going. Listen, <laughs> people, people will meet me sometimes out and they'll, when I'm in conversation with somebody, I'm in conversation. So they'll like try to talk to me and then I can't focus on them, so they think I'm being rude. And I'm like, no, I'm just focusing on this person, right? right. So, yeah. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. It's all love. It is always good to see you. Always. Yes, I'm indeed. speaking it. The best seller, okay? And I'm going to blow your phone up. I'll text you. I think I got your address, too, from, from our Maker's Distro. But when that, when that happens... You know I'm nothing but four hours away, East Boogie to Chicago. So I might have to socially distance, come see you at some point. Listen, Listen come through, come through. Thank and you. shout out to everybody who has already yeah. ordered this book. Y'all, I'm so nervous for next week. I don't know why I'm nervous. I know it's going to be great. I know it's going to go well. But I think my, I, I'm just like, to have the thing that you've been working on for so long, to be dropped in the world, y'all. I'm over here like, what is next week about to be? And I'm I excited. I'm excited for y'all to read this book. I'm excited to hear what you think about it. Tag me on it. When you get this book, when you yes. read it, please review it on Amazon and all these platforms because it matters. Yes. And uh, yeah, man, y'all know how to find me. Yeah, and it's such a blessing. Yeah, I'm not just saying this because I adore her and love her. It really is an amazing amazing masterpiece people there there's a generation that's going to know you as an iconic speaking mm. author seriously oh my god seriously seriously so thank you for being a vessel honey thank you so i much love you love you too thank you for sharing you. thank you for sharing space with me and and, and, and if y'all can just remember nobody wins when fear wins okay nobody wins when fear wins and um more to come and y'all catch me on these interwebs that's it. That's it. Well, thank y'all so much. Be kind and good to yourselves and each other. Y'all have a great weekend. Peace and light. Bye, you all. Thank you.